Hello everyone, welcome back to Shanti Bloom and thank you all so much for tuning in again. If you're new here, hi, my name is Chantal and I'm presently doing a mini series on time management. Yes, time is this free valuable resource that has been given to us, but it can be easily wasted and unfortunately it is not renewable. We all are guilty of wasting time at one point or the other and we kind of tend to enjoy it in that moment only to regret, you know, wasting that time days later, weeks later, months and even years later. In my previous video, I shared with you some of the consequences of poor time management that I have suffered. And you would agree with me that lost time is one of the biggest, biggest causes of regret in life. And guess what? Living in regret is equally a waste of time. So in order to break the cycle, I believe it is very important to identify time wasters in our lives and to do our best to get rid of them. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you the top five time wasters. The biggest time wasters that often go unnoticed and you're going to find out in what ways they are stealing or wasting your time and how you can get rid of them. Number one is lack of clarity and I would like to even break it down further to lack of clarity for your everyday life. That's what Shanti Bloom is all about, right? Learning to bloom and flourish in our everyday life. You may have clarity for your life in general, where you are and where you want to go, but if you do not break it down, to every day like knowing what you want to achieve today you know today is a gift not everybody woke up today so what is it that you want to get out of this day if it is not clear to you you are going to waste time let's say i wake up in the morning and i'm not sure of something as simple as what i'm going to cook today for my family that can be a time waster because i'll be getting to that refrigerator and coming out getting to the pantry and coming out if I knew exactly what I wanted to cook, I'll get into a pantry, grab what I need and start cooking. Little to no time wasted. I understand that the word clarity can be very intimidating at times. It has been for me in the past, but it should not be so. I think the reason why we get so overwhelmed by the process of finding clarity is because we tend to think too big, mega, international, or we want everything clearly mapped out for us detailed from start to finish in order for us to consider that that is clarity. But for me, I began to find clarity in my life when I started to intentionally look at different areas of my life, right? Breaking my life up into these little segments and looking at one at a time, asking very honest or tough questions to myself. Where am I and where do I want to go? And when I got these honest answers, I started to pursue personal growth from the inside out. And as you pursue growth, you find clarity things become clearer. I began to see talents I did not know that I have. You know, I developed passion for certain things. I saw opportunities I did not know were there. It's only when we have clarity that we are able to set achievable goals. For example, let's say I lost my job. I have to ask myself, where am I and where do I want to be? Where am I? I'm jobless. I'm depending on people financially. Where do I want to be? I want to come to that place where I have, you know, financial freedom or fin I'm financially independent what do I have to do I may ask myself do I want to go out there and get another job do I want to start a business do I want to you know do something on my own let's say I finally see that what's best for me at this time is to get out there and look for another job what are the jobs that are out there that best fit my qualifications as you're asking yourself these questions you know it begins to shape the activities for your month for your week for your day you now said today is that day I set aside to you know do my research for the jobs that are out there for the, the requirements for that job to see if i meet the requirements for this job tomorrow is that day that i actually pick up my phone and start making calls or i pick up my pen and i start to write my applications when you find clarity for your everyday life you will save time number two is the lack of a daily action plan and i know somebody may be rolling their eyes again like oh my goodness not the goal setting i'm planning again i've been there done that and i'm still struggling with time management well first let me ask you are you sure you've really been there and done that or have you just been overhearing about goal setting and planning because i'm guilty of that many times i think things in my head and i consider that goal setting and planning if you're tired just because you've overheard about it and not because you've actually sat down and set goals and made plans, then I think you have to hear it again until you take action. Let me ask you, this day that is unfolding for you right now, was it planned? 
Are you leaving it intentionally or you've left it to chance? How many of us start off our day with one task and before we know we hop from one task to the next and by the end of the day we cannot really measure the progress? Usually when I waste my time it's not because I do not have a monthly goal or even a weekly goal. It's because I fail to break it all the way down to daily achievable goals, actionable plans for each day. And so I can start off my day, say, um, cleaning my bathroom. Before you know it, there's an email notification. You check the email. It is a reminder that next week your child has to come to school with a gold t-shirt. And you're thinking gold t-shirt. You run to the closet. There is no gold t-shirt. You pick up your phone. You're on Amazon. And while you're on Amazon, Amazon starts to distract you, send you recommendation of other items related to your past search history. Before you know it, you're doing something else right you started cleaning your bathroom which is undone and here you are on amazon and you're not even shopping for the gold t-shirt you're shopping for something else but if you had that day clearly mapped out and planned out and you know very well that okay my lifestyle is such that i have to check my emails daily then you've allocated time to check emails then you would have finished that task knowing that you know what i have time to check my emails later on and so you do one task at a time it's fully completed you are able to measure the progress it's unfortunate that a lot of people just sit around allow their lives to be wasted telling themselves why plan when i really do not hold tomorrow do you know what i call my action plan i call it my my substance of things hoped for. I said you this right here is the evidence of things not seen. It is that faith I have that I'm going to be given the gift of a brand new day. And when I'm given this gift, this is how I'm going to be a faithful steward of this gift. Keeping in mind that whatever I plan to do in each day should be taking me a step closer towards accomplishing my God-given purpose. I already have videos on goal setting and planning. And a couple of months ago, I had a collab with John Gibbs and we had this beautiful conversation still centered around this aspect of why should I plan if I do not hold the future so these are beautiful videos I will recommend that you should watch them but I will still I'm still considering making a short video on uh, on making on action planning because I've come to realize that we have different goals for different sections of our lives or different aspects of our lives and we do not leave our lives one section at a time or one area at a time we leave everything simultaneously and so there is a way that we have to plan in such a way that we strike a balance you know at the end of the day we have we achieve the goals for these different areas of our lives so stay tuned for that video number three is over planning this one is for me it's for this lady sitting right here i have a million stories i can tell you which are related to my over planning tendencies and they're not beautiful stories at all you know it's a problem when we do not plan lack of planning is a problem but over planning is equally a problem it is a big time waster over planning often comes from the spirit of perfection you want things to be so perfect that you keep planning and you're not starting and what comes next procrastination you're procrastinating you know the next step and you you stay in that place of planning so over planning perfection procrastination those are all birds of the same feather flogging together you procrastinate to the point where you run out of time or you are doing things last minute so you rush over it and you do a sloppy job and guess what if you're a perfectionist you will not like that sloppy job and what happens it triggers the need to even be more perfect next time and so it becomes a cycle I still remember in college when we we're given homework my friends will grab a textbook do their homework and head out I will grab a textbook do my homework and instead of heading out I'll be like uh, what if this textbook has more information what if that other textbook has more information and before I know it I have all these textbooks around me I've made the whole situation more complex and overwhelming and trust me it's not as if I ended up with way way better grades than they did the one that still haunts me till today is when I wanted to give a gift to somebody that I love and respect I just wanted to give them something special and so I kept looking for the perfect gift I went to the stores I came back I tried to shop online I did not pick up anything I just kept on procrastinating and planning and planning until I ran out of time and last minute I just grabbed anything and I gave it to them I was so upset with myself now am I saying that we should live life like mediocres we don't plan we do not prepare we just rush into things no the point here is that do not depend on your feelings don't wait for that time that you will feel prepared you will feel ready because you will all almost never feel prepared but honestly and objectively look and ask yourself have I laid down the necessary foundation to stop planning and start building have I planned enough to stop and start doing how do you know that you have planned enough when that plan 
answers your goal. And how do you know there is no need to add anything? When you ask yourself, if I add some other things, make things more complex, does it really add any significant value to the outcome? If the answer is no, then it's time to stop planning and start doing. And even when you start doing, there is a place where you stop for the day, and that is called the place of excellence. How do you know you've gotten to that place of excellence? When you have done your best, when you've given your best, when you've gone your extra mile, that is the place of excellence. And the good thing is that, we grow in excellence, right? My best of today is way better than my best of yesterday. And my best of tomorrow, I know, will be way better than my best of today. Because as we go the extra mile, as we give our best, we grow. We sharpen ourselves and we grow. And that is how you grow in excellence. So start that project you've been avoiding. Hand in that homework you have been doing forever. Round up with that painting you've been perfecting. Upload that video you've been editing for days. <laughs> that one was for me. Number four is poor management of your social media time. You knew this was going to be there, right? Social media has stolen time from a lot of us. And it's not only stealing time, it's so bad that it's even stealing joy and peace and contentment from the lives of so many people. You know, it's true that social media has its benefits. It has some good things. You are there, you socialize, you keep in touch with people. You know, some people use it for marketing. They advertise their stuff. Some people give out information information valuable information to others through social media others get valuable information through social media and they're just a long list of things that good things that go on on social media even though there are a whole lot of other bad ones but any good thing you know when it goes out of control it becomes bad and so it's important that you should be able to manage your social media time i've heard of a few apps and programs that you can use to manage your social media platforms but in this video i'm going to share with you just two basic things that you can do that would be of help if you don't want to deal with more apps and more programs again you know first what you can do is consider that turning off notifications and keeping them on only for things that really really do matter for you there are some things that i have to have my notification bells on because there are things i've subscribed to there are things that i consume there are things that you know add to me i need those things to be on to create a reminder for me or i can sign up for something and suddenly forget and that that occasion or whatever was happening passes so i need that notification on for a reminder now, the second thing to do is that even if you have that notification bell on, try and resist that temptation to respond to it spontaneously all the time. I read somewhere that push notification is directly linked to phone addiction. I've seen people that, you know, if their phone rings, they stumble here, they're almost falling. Like, I'm like, chill. It was just, you know, a phone ringing or it's just a notification. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. You know, rather allocate time that you are going to go check your notifications and read what you have to read you know or attend to whatever you had to attend or consume whatever uh, um, thing that you had to consume on social media if you do not keep it organized if you do not give give allocated time trust me your life is going to be controlled by social media and it will not only steal your time like i said earlier it will steal your joy it will steal your peace it will steal your contentment it will just take your life away and i've told you that time management begins with life management number five is worrying worrying is also one of those things that will not only steal your time will not only waste your time but will also steal your joy your peace and sometimes even your relationships have you ever been around somebody who constantly worries grumbles and complains you know you weary the people around you and they may begin to drift away so how do we address this aspect of worry sit down and ask yourself what is it exactly that i'm worried about what is it that is giving me sleepless nights and then ask yourself is there something that i can do to change the situation if the answer is yes then get to your planning plan just enough and start doing when you start taking these baby steps towards solving whatever it is that is bothering you, even if you have not arrived your expected end, it would relieve you of that worry. But sometimes after asking ourselves that question, we realize that we are worried about something that is way, way beyond our control. The truth is that in this life, we will not always have an understanding or an explanation to everything. There will be things that you cannot explain why they happened or why they did not happen. And when you are faced with a situation like that, this is my advice for you. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So these are my top five time wasters or the biggest time wasters that we must do everything to remove from our lives so that we can regain control of this beautiful gift called time and i know there are many more if you know some of the time wasters that i have not mentioned in this video please do leave them in the comment section below and again i would like to say that this video should not bring you sadness should not bring you regret don't feel like oh my goodness i have all these time wasters i've allowed it and see how much time it has stolen from me rather take steps join me on this series let us continue to seek wisdom and gain understanding on how we can manage or regain control over this beautiful gift called time thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next